The second point is that there are different kinds of companies or cohorts, as they call it. So they, it's a federated learning of cohorts. So like think of cohorts like the companies in the Betty Crocker example. Some are mom and pop shops in a poor black neighborhood. And then others are the Ritz Carlton. This is not new. What you get shown online already depends on your race, gender, and income. I mean, using AI to predict your socioeconomic status, again, also is not new. In 2013, Facebook was granted a patent for inferring household income for users of a social networking system based on the sites that you visit and the place where you live. So like there's already a patent on this exact issue, like granted a patent. I'm not talking about when they were applying for a patent. In 2013, they were granted the patent for this. Also, like this automatic opting you in to send your data to big tech is also not new as well. Uh, for example, in 2018, Google started automatically opting you into Chrome browser logging when you logged into any Google product, such as Gmail. So I don't know if you know that, but like if you're on Google Chrome, you just log into Gmail, the information is being sent to, to Google, right? <laughs> it's, it's frightening. It's frightening. <laughs> yes. In 2013, uh, Gizmodo's uh, Kashmir Hill wrote about how shadow profiles. Now you, you've heard this in the news a little bit about shadow profiles. Um, these are people who never created a Facebook account. Uh, they were discovered when a user downloaded their Facebook file and it included not just their friends, visible contact information, but also their friends shadow conflict, uh, contact information. Uh, so the extent of the connections uh, Facebook builds around its users is supposed to be visible really only for the company itself. Uh, but in this case, a bug uh, revealed a truth. Your information is being stored on Facebook, even if you don't have a Facebook account. Um, in the same article, you heard um, horrifying stories such as uh, a man who years ago donated sperm to a couple secretly um, so they could have a child only to have Facebook recommend the child as a person he should know. Um, they didn't like that person. He still knows the couple, but um, he's not friends with them on Facebook, but somehow he knows that, yep, your child, this child, because you creep their profile, right? Like, so it knows that. Again, unconscious input. It kind of doesn't matter whether or not you friended a person. It knows. A social worker whose clients called her by her nickname on the second visit uh, because she'd known, but because she's shown up um, in his uh, people you may know uh, profile. So people you may know. So if you go like to your friends list and it'll suggest people you know, um, you know, despite not having exchanged any contact information, you suddenly find that this person that you just called you by a nickname, suddenly they appear in this people you may know profile. A woman whose father left her family when she was six years old, like this is somebody like you, you wouldn't even know, uh, saw his then mistress suggested to her as a Facebook friend. 40 years later. <laughs> so uh, like a father you hadn't seen for 40 years, you see her mistress on your Facebook profile. Like this is AI, like revealing its creepiness. And like I said, reactions to creepiness are why things get sh changed. An attorney uh, who wrote, I deleted Facebook after it recommended as uh, people you may know, a man who was defense counsel on one of my cases. We had only communicated through my work email, which is not connected to my Facebook. 
which convinced me that uh, Facebook was scanning my work email. So a person that you've never connected with on Facebook suddenly appears as, hey, people you may know. And so what's going on here? Well, it, it turns out it, like Facebook doesn't even need to know, like scan your email, your work email in order to get that kind of information. Um, like I mentioned, like th these kind of unconscious things are, are there. And also it's not about you. It's about like other people who are like you and finding people you may know is, is based on maybe your friends profiles, for example. So, uh, Facebook also asks, uh, business owners to install uh, a Facebook pixel. So I don't know if you've heard of a, a Facebook, uh, like it's a, it's a cookie tracker on many popular sites uh, you visit so that your actions can can be logged. Um, so many of you have already heard of cookies, uh, many modern browsers such as um, like Brave, for example, uh, they block both trackers and ads. And since, you know, blogs and news sites and, and so many media creators make their revenue from these ads, they require that you unblock ads in order to watch the articles or news or, or videos, etc. Um, so all this is, I'm not talking about anything new here, like this has been around for years, almost was it 10 years. So what is new is that you no longer know what cohort you're in and how many people are in your cohort. And why does this matter? Who cares? Right? So I, I'm in a federated learning of cohorts. Who cares? Well, if the cohort is small, right? So cohort is like, think of the companies I talked about in the Betty Crocker example. If it's small, let's say 10 people or 100 people, then it essentially becomes a fingerprint that eventually leads back to you. It's not that hard to figure out like among these 10 people, which one is you? Uh, if the cohort is really big, let's say it's like millions of people, uh, then it becomes a way of grouping people by broad categories. Um, it could be like gender or race or income, uh, those types of like much more broad categories. Essentially, we are teaching AI to, to be biased. Yeah, pretty much to be biased. We're teaching it discrimination. <laughs> now, what's the big deal about grouping people by these broad categories such as gender, race, and income? Now we know in the 2018 US election, we saw how misinformation uh, targeted to uh, poor black communities had an impact in growing voter apathy. They just wouldn't go to the polls. Uh, the mostly non-black media uh, didn't notice these advertisements because they were served a very different set of advertisements on sites such as Facebook. So if the argument is made that big tech doesn't actually know what cohort you're in, you're placed in, they can also avoid liability for making suggestions that are potentially harmful to you. So let's say Betty Crocker releases a recipe that causes a medical reaction in a nut free cookie company. Betty Crocker might argue that she is not liable because she never came up with the recipe to begin with. She only shared a recipe that an anonymous user came up with. <laughs> and when asked who that user was, Betty Crocker could then say, there's no way to know who submitted it since they were all anonymous to begin with. Remember, like we said, the cards are anonymous. This is how federated learning works is we're only mo talking about the modifications to the model modifications to the recipe. And we're only looking at like, there's no name associated with it. It's just like a few modifications. So this anonymity um, is being described as protecting your privacy. Uh, but really what it does is it gives protection to these 
large big tech companies. It is going to be really hard to know what posts and videos and ultimately ads are shown to whom. Uh, it's also going to be really hard to know where the suggestions come from and who did they go to or who they went to. And this matters to you because you won't have the option to turn this off. You will not have the right to correct, delete, or change this data because it's technically and legally not yours. Your data is just this anonymous modification to a recipe. Your data, especially when you are in a uh, flock example, um, it's just those cards. It's just those cards, those modifications to the recipe. And legally and technically, they do not belong to you. They are the property of the big tech company that is implementing flock. And so it has all sorts of details about you, all sorts of details about what you like to watch, how much milliseconds you spend on certain posts. Uh, but it's technically not you. It's technically a processed version of you. It's a, yeah, it's just like a, it's just recipe modifications to a recipe. What's the big deal, right? That's what we're sending over to, to Google in Flock. So this changes the nature. And we used to say that data is the new oil. Well, federated data is going to be the new oil. Because that data that people were collecting about you, the personally identifiable data was a liability. Think about it, right? Like it, every little bit of data you have to be liable for, you could get sued if you don't handle it properly. Ugh, so annoying, right? So much work. But now if I collect this federated data, yes, the more of that I have, this is an asset for that company and it doesn't go away. Like I, I have this information potentially forever and your rights to that, to delete it are not, are basically none because it's not you. It's an anonymous version of you, right? That is why I say you are going to yearn for the day that you at least knew you had cookies and you at least knew what they were tracking about you. At least you, you, you could say like, oh, I don't want cookie tracking. You are going to yearn for that day. And that day is going to disappear very, very soon. And we're going to enter this new era of data. And I'm not talking about regular, like personally identifiable data. We're going to enter this new era of federated data, which you have no rights to, and you have no control of.